In this video, we're going to take a look at how Taysen dominated the All-Star FNCS Championship. Now this is his third FNCS title, his second solo title, and Taysen has been an absolute beast since the start of Chapter 2. Now, he's arguably the best player in the world, and we're going to take a look and see exactly how he does this. What's up guys, Somebody's Gun here, back with another VOD review of how Taysen won FNCS. It literally came down to the last bullet. It was him versus Vino in a single 1v1, and Taysen was able to win the match, eliminate Vino, and push himself into first place. An awesome victory, and there's some key pieces that I want to share with you guys. Let's set the scene. Taysen landed Orchard and was uncontested every single game. There was other players that landed nearby him, but for the most part left him alone during looting and Taysen was able to grab a quick loot path from Orchard and move on out of there. Taysen typically left before the first storm started to close. This was super helpful in him getting to good surge spots, as well as the use of vehicles. He used both vehicles and a quick loot path to get himself into good positions to be able to get surge tags. His loot coming out of Orchard was pretty solid. He had Peppers 3 out of 6 games and had launch pads in 2. Then in the final match, he was able to pick up a Slurp Cannon from a Llama as well. His mats were pretty much always full. He just needed to farm either a little more brick or a little more wood on the way out. For Storm Surge, Taysen's preferred strategy was getting Surge Tags from a distance with his AR. This is typically what the best players do because getting in engagements in these high elo lobbies causes you to take chances to get eliminated and get yourself out of these games without any placement points. So because of this, this strategy is what he implored and typically he was going towards three different bridges. In three out of six games, he was going and posting up at a bridge looking for surge tags and this is because players are funneled towards these locations because of the roads. They need to be driving their cars. A lot of players are rotating in vehicles, so therefore they're on the roads and Bridges are where the roads are leading to, so this is a really good spot for him to post up, and it worked really well because he had no issues with Storm Surge. The only time Taysen died in early game was in game 1 when Vortex hit a nice pre-fire on him, they traded some damage, and then eventually Vortex decides to push this fight. You have to assume that this was because Vortex needed some surge damage, or also knew that Taysen was weak and wanted this position. Either way, Taysen played this pretty well, besides the final edit where he put himself in a very exposed position where he could have had a much better right-handed peek and Vortex takes him down, but other than that, Taysen is consistently making end games. Now that we've set the stage, it's time to move on to end games and this is where Taysen plays so, so well. We'll start off here in game two, a match that he was able to win, and he's scouting this first before he wants to place this launch pad. He's consistently using launch pads in fifth and sixth zone, whether he has them or whether he's looking to recycle them, and he's really good at making sure he's getting out of anything above him and using short pads when possible. Then in sixth zone, Taysen typically likes to play a ultimate low ground layer. He'll then work his way up in the middle of this end game, so second, third moving, and depending on his mat situation, he either goes for the win, or he's going to go and try and play shambles within these builds. It works really well for him, and in this game, he actually has a great refresh dumped on his head, which allows him to then go play for the win, and this game ends pretty quickly. So, not only is he going to play for the win, but he's going to play in a great position recognizing what's going on on height and almost get this for free. My favorite part about VOD reviewing Taysen is that he's always playing within his own builds. Rarely if ever is he peeking outside of his builds and giving other players opportunities to punish him. Then he has great zone recognition, great material recognition to put himself in positions, use the builds when they need to be used, and then typically when he's on front side he will cheap tarp so that way he can save some materials. 
Here's the high ground play I was talking about. Taysen kind of recognizes there's not many players up on high ground and is going to start to push himself up. He takes a peek, sees that Benji is not even paying attention, and it's a free beam onto the height player. And from there, Taysen holds ultimate height for absolute free. All he had to do was look up, build a little bit, and then punish the player for not paying attention. From here on out, this is clinical for a player of Taysen's caliber. He knows what to do when he's on the high ground, he has 40 plus builds, he has the chug cannon, and he's going to close out this game. Now the most interesting piece of this is when he's in the final 1v1 versus Teak. You will recognize this here, this game's going to end fairly quickly as well. But in the final 1v1 versus Teak, he has great recognition to know that Teak cannot have many materials, doesn't give him an opportunity to take some good shots on him, and just ticks away at his opponent until he's able to get that final, final victory royale. And this is what I mean, instead of taking a 50-50 play, Taysen is going to know he has the material and the HP advantage, force Teak to make a mistake, and then just punish him when he does, and this is exactly how you should be closing out games. Teak goes down a storm and there's win number one. Now let's take a look at game three. Taysen does the same thing once again, gonna use one of his pads here in first moving, put himself into an ultimate low ground position. There's some server lag, he takes some damage, he survives, doesn't really matter, and then he's gonna look to rotate on this ultimate low ground into first moving zone. With that pad, Taysen positioned himself in a great spot. He's in the dead side of moving zone on ultimate low ground, and as we can see after that initial issue, he has absolutely no one nearby him, and he is in a great spot to just relax and play the game out he can also grab information because he's not totally buried even though he's on ultimate low ground once again he's going to use a pad to put himself on the front side of zone and he's really good at looking back trying to find refreshes he finds refs guard running right into a wall and to me that says this guy has absolutely no mats he's making a shambles play and this is a refresh that really extends the game here for Taysen. he was good on materials up until this point but this secures him so many more materials. Taysen doesn't go on to win this game, but in my opinion, this second place and the way he plays this is even more impressive because instead of playing a high ground position and winning and dominating from that, he skirts around in this mid game and finds himself holes, uses very little materials and keeps himself alive, giving himself a chance to at least play for the win, if not second place. This part that we're about to watch is what makes Taysen so good and allows him to play and do so well in these solos when everyone else is saying, oh, RNG, RNG, no. Taysen is consistently putting himself in the end games. We saw his match history earlier. He's an absolute beast and is because plays like this. He's finding old builds, finding places where he can skirt through and barely build, but also saving a couple of builds for when he needs them. He's not giving himself absolutely nothing to work with he's playing around the few builds that he has and also the builds that have been already placed this is saving him a ton of mats and it's also putting him in positions to just hold out his shotgun be aware and be ready just in case someone decides to make an edit or jump on him wonderfully played by him and he will continue to do this throughout the other games that we see from him this is where he is super successful and i want to say is the key factor that made him stand out and win is his mid-level end game play finding ways through these old builds is really the thing that distinguished him in this tournament because without it he goes down much earlier he's not going in and just making psycho plays but he's playing from the old builds that he has putting himself consistently in positions to be able to get eliminations and secure additional placement points he's not taking too many risks and like i said before he's playing from the peaks and the angles that he has consistently making sure that he's taking the right peaks and angle. He drops down, secures the low ground, and by the time he figures out what's going on, gets his loot together, he's now in a 1v1 situation versus Andalex, and good luck winning that when you're down on HP and in the worst position. Andalex takes this, but still, nonetheless, the second place is huge for Taysen. He just won a game, able to secure second place, and now he's on top of the leaderboard. Let's jump right into game four and we're going to highlight once again what I just talked about in the last game. 
Taysen plays this mid-ground layer really, really well. And after he gets this Elim and is able to grab a nice little refresh in the Slurp Cannon, it allows him to dip, duck, dive, and go into Storm, take a couple of ticks, and do some things differently that he necessarily wouldn't without this Slurp Cannon. It's a huge advantage in these end games because when you're getting chipped away at from pump damage, from storm damage, you can quickly heal yourself back up to full HP or even near it and be in an HP advantage. A lot of players in endgame are going to be quite weak, so that's why the slurp cannon is huge or the chug cannon, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, let's focus on this endgame and how he plays this. One thing that he does really well is, again, stay within his builds and use the builds that he has. But when going into other players' builds, he always takes a second. Make sure he looks to see what's going on and doesn't immediately jump in to whatever box, whatever build is in the next position that he needs to move into. He takes a one pickaxe swing, sees what is down below him, sees what's to the left of him, and then makes a decision based on that total information that he has available. It's a really smart thing to do, and in these end games where it seems chaotic, Taysen seems cool, calm, and collected. Taysen does an amazing job of maximizing his placement in every single match. Regardless if he has materials or not, he's trying his best to make sure he stays alive and secures as many points as possible. Now we're going to skip straight to game six, and honestly, this is one of the most phenomenal games of Fortnite that I've ever seen. Going into this game, Taysen was down to Vino. He needed to make up room. He needed to either get more Elims or outplace Vino and secure the victory royale. Little did either of them know it would come down to a final 1v1 that would decide it. And we'll go ahead and take a look at exactly how this plays out. So as we start, Taysen's looking in the cone, trying to find a launch pad to be able to rotate in the zone. It doesn't happen, so he's going to decide to stay on low ground and rotate how he normally does on foot without the launch pad. He identifies a beautiful path on the edge of zone to save a lot of materials just like normal. What is new? Taysen saving mats, making good rotates. That's exactly what he's doing here again. And it's because he's pushed himself to ultimate low of the dead side of first moving. In second moving here, Taysen's going to put himself in a solid position. He's going to raise up layers to avoid the congestion and the chaos down below. He wants to get into some clear space, and that's exactly what he does. He finds himself a good layer up higher, knowing that... As a solo, you can't pressure me that well on high ground, and he also wants to give himself a potential opportunity to look up and play for height if he wants to. It doesn't wind up happening in this game, but you'll never get it if you never try, and that's what he's doing right here. Another thing to note is how good Taysen is at cheap tarping. He's throwing down one wall, a single ramp, a single floor, consistently saving those materials because he knows how precious they are going to be and useful in endgame, but at the same time, he's still protecting himself with these different builds, just doing so with less of them. Then when he gets into zones, he builds himself full boxes. That way, is space to play from. If someone aggros him, he has edits that he could play from. If he wants to look for a fight or look for different peaks and shots on players, he has the opportunity because he then invests once he gets into zone. As the lobby begins to thin out, Taysen recognizes that drops layers were also going down elevation, so you don't want to be up that high. And he's going to put himself on front side of zone here, but relax. He's not looking to make any crazy plays yet. He still has a slurp cannon, still has plenty of materials to work with. So he's playing patiently, trying to maximize this placement like we talked about in previous games. He hits a little cheap tarp to get in zone and then looks back to try and start eliminating the rest of this lobby himself. He's not going to be able to grab the elims just yet, but hold on. He's going to take down everyone here in a second. He's never reaching outside of his builds and always acutely aware of what's going on in his surroundings. I mean, look at this ramp flip to protect himself and dip out of a potential engagement and still continue to farm up displacement points. It may not seem like much, but that's the difference between Taysen getting 5th or 6th. A quick little ramp flip, putting himself back into his old builds, and now he gets to play from a position that he controls 
Now Taysen is going to eliminate the last four players in this lobby. Finds two players fighting on the backside of Storm. Takes them down. That's easy. He's going to drop down. He has no materials. He doesn't dive back in Storm because he doesn't want to get into an engagement he can't control. Finds some shots here onto the opposing player. Nice little duck. Gets the elim. That's a nice piece of movement. And then Vino just misses the shots. Taysen's clutch. He takes home the victory royale. I cannot explain how great of a play this is and how great of a tournament this was to watch. Not only is Taysen taking down the final four players, but he's coming head to head with the other player who was previously in the lead until Taysen popped off for the win. This comes down to the final shots, literally, of the tournament. The last shot fired wins Taste in the tournament, and because a quick little duck play is not getting greedy, going for the loot, and staying calm in the face of an enemy that's dropping in front of you when you're trying to place builds, just hitting your shots, I cannot state this enough. This is one of the most unforgettable Fortnite games we have ever seen, and I really hope this one does not go away. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, comment down below what your thoughts are about Taysen, if he's the best player of all time. I don't know about that one. He's currently the best player in the world, in my opinion. And that was one of the best, if not the best, Fortnite game of all time. Game 6, Taysen clutching against Vino to win the tournament. Anyway... Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you. Make sure you hit that like and sub button. I'm Somebody's Gun, and I'll see you next time.